Okay, I could not wait for this. Um, as you know, Dick Gregory has left us, and I could not wait to share this with you. Be blessed. Much fun. I always had fun when it gets cold. And old white racist walked up to me and said, Why don't you go back to Africa, nigga, and take me with you? <laughs> then you know it's cold. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. This is like a Worthy cause, freedom of speech, and, and all the exciting things that's happened. Those of you all that live here, you know they just legalize marijuana. Are y'all crazy? Two ounces? But you can see, those of you just come in for this, you can see there's things happening now in Washington because of the new law of legalizing marijuana. Congress is coming back next week and they're going to get involved with the marijuana thing. They, they talk about doing a joint session. <laughs> And I'm extra happy today because we just finished in the last day of Black History Month. <laughs> Black History Month. And a lot of people say, oh, are we making progress? You know. Well, for you young folks in the house, it used to be called Negro History Week. Now we're going from a week to a month. But you know, when they got ready to give us a month, it'd be that month of February with all them damn days missing, right? <laughs> In February, do it bother you white folks that February the 2nd is Groundhog Day? They ask yourself, what's a groundhog? If the groundhog sees his shadow, what they say? Six more weeks of winter? Can you believe your white folk can be that silly? <laughs> <laughs> With all them cameras out, when it comes out the ground, that thing couldn't help but see a damn shadow. Huh? <laughs> and if the groundhog sees his shadow, six more weeks of winter. And to think, I wanted to go to school with y'all. <laughs> when you get home, check out your calendar. Spring is March the 21st. Count from February the 2nd to March 21st. That is six weeks. <laughs> Mr. Martin Luther King had, because this is, now this was serious. This was serious. We sit and talk about the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and all them thugs owned people. So what could come out of that? That's why we out here still working. And even George and, 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 and Frank, they, they couldn't trick the universe. They said, well, we own slaves, so we can't be a symbol of, of liberty. So the, the, the colored brother said, boss, why don't you get that bell and hit it and let that be a symbol of liberty. You can trick me, you can trick you, you can come up with all kinds of trick laws, but you can't trick the universe. They hit that bell in Philadelphia, 
bang, and the bell cracked all the way from the bottom to the top. That's the symbol of liberty when it's been put together by some tricky people. And that's why you got to keep working on it and you got to do things that they used to didn't do. They act like they had something. Well, I'm looking at all these silly books. But it was in Ferguson. And white folks said, they ride and they tearing up their own neighborhood. But what do you think the Civil War was about? You think they was tearing up Spain? Hmm? <laughs> and what was it, what, what, six weeks ago? First time in the history a football college finally decided they was going to have one final champion. Remember that? Go back and look at the reruns. Ohio won, and then white folks tore that town up. It's okay to do it over a damn game, but my mama gets shot in the back of the head by a cop 40 times, and I'm not supposed to tear up nothing. And even when they had that little ride in Ferguson, they was behaved. Did you see them? Looting the liquor store? Come out with, with a half pint of gin. They didn't even get no chips. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna watch this thing change. And thanks for Dr. King and all the folks that came in in the 60s to change it. And you white folks should really be thankful because all the legislation we got, it didn't say for Negroes only. So you was covered. <laughs> but for our movement, a white woman couldn't do nothing on an airplane to be a stewardess. Hmm? Couldn't be a pilot. Huh? Like, like, like you have to have some kind of smarts to be a pilot. You see the stupid stuff there? They lost a damn plane. <laughs> That's why we black folks travel with Greyhound. Greyhound ain't never lost a bus. <laughs> I just don't understand you white folks. Greyhound would never treat us like they do you at the airport. You got to walk to the damn plane. Greyhound, bring that bus up to your toe. <laughs> they lie to you. The bags, you, they're looking for the bags and they act like you didn't have none. <laughs> Three blocks before Greyhound get into the terminal, they say, all the bags got ripped off in Memphis, so don't go to baggage. <laughs> Hey, you white folks into the best school, so I get on the airplane and, and my bags is missing. I trust you. I said, I would like to speak to the supervisor. The second floor to the right. I go up there, go on the supervisor. He got on my suit. <laughs> Somewhere tonight, when we stop and think about how far we came and where this thing is going, now think about the civil rights movement and what it meant to white folks too. Like I said before this movement, thank you, Dr. King, a white woman couldn't do nothing at the airline to be a stewardess. You couldn't be a mechanic. You couldn't be assistant pilot. You couldn't even take our job, baggage handler. All you could do Plain before our movement is be a stewardess. And it didn't stop there. You had to look like something out of the center page of Playboy magazine. And you tolerated that. White folks owned it. We didn't own it. White folks owned it. Huh? But all you could do until our movement came through. And any time you go out to that airport now and get on a plane and see an old, short, ugly, fat stewardess, we got her that job. <laughs> Not her. 
father, not a brother, not your Marines, and all you gonna sit around is brag about what you, you ain't got a damn thing. And you tolerate it. I mean, think about it. The 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment gave black men the legal right to vote before white women got it. Think about that. You didn't get the right to vote till 1921 after you died, fought, thrown in jail, abused. We had the right, they didn't let us, but we had it before you. That's your, that's your daddy, that's your brother, that's all the white men that run this country, but you didn't have nothing. And, and that's how this and all this crap, the folks that just want to appease you sit around and talk, huh? This one of peace you and talk about. There's no difference. And you need to listen to black folk because they, they, they be lying to y'all. There's no difference between black folks and white folks. You know that's a damn lie. What you turn, what's that for? Cialis commercial? And if you have a four hour erection, go to the emergency room. Now you know they're talking to white men. <laughs> and they're running on TV. Little children. My little grandson, four years old, walked to me the other day and said, Granddad, what's an erection? I said, go ask your grandmother. <laughs> he came back with that little smile on his face. I said, what did she say? She said she'll tell me later, but to tell you she hasn't seen one of them things around the house in years. <laughs> You can make a difference. A handful of people in here put this together. Hmm? You can make a difference. But you have to look at the whole piece. Hmm? The whole piece. Black folk get shot in the back 40 times, have guns thrown in the car, and that don't bother you. You have to make it good. That's your job. They just put it together. Now you have to make it good. Capital punishment. Are you serious? I can understand you getting mad and killing me, but not my damn state. Not my government going to do it, but that don't bother you, huh? You that's in here and bought tickets and want to see this thing work, we represent light. All that other crazy, they represent darkness. The problem is when your light become afraid of their darkness, then your light is not light. You got more light than the CIA, the FBI, the military thugs will ever have for the reason they control it, because of your fear. Because of your fear. <laughs> There are some things worth dying for. I learned in the civil rights, there's nothing worth killing for. Nothing worth killing for. <laughs> so as you leave here, just know you part of this. Drop your fears. Huh? It's that simple. I come out of a Christian family, my mom and them, were you there when they crucified me? I told them, shut up. If Jesus come back today and bug the wrong people, we're going to give him an electric chair. And we all be walking around with big chairs around our neck. Who are you there? <laughs> Somebody called me on the radio show. And he said, Mr. Gregory, you a father, 10 black children, never been no scandal. What do you think about these young black men walking around with their pants below their... I said, I can't answer that. Why? I say, for 20 years when I was drinking, I used to drink a fifth of scotch every day. Can I tell you how many times I drove drunk, which is a felony. Wearing your pants low ain't a felony. So you need to get somebody else who want to tell you about that. And I don't think that I ever heard that the folks who killed Jesus Christ had their pants below their belt. I can't help nobody say when these thugs ripped off the banks and didn't have to pay for it. They was wearing their pants. 
I've seen the mob in New York. I've seen how they portray the movie. They are immaculate. Hmm? Rest in peace and be blessed. <laughs>